Okay, okay, I know that this is a weird thing for me to be covering, and I could make some joke about how Archie is the original harem manga, but the truth of the matter is that the CW's new series, Riverdale, has me very upset, and I just want to talk about it, because I care about Archie. I'm allowed to be a thing other than a weeb. See, I grew up reading Archie comics. My dad would buy me a new Archie Digest volume whenever he went grocery shopping, and I would devour each one. From the time I could first read, I was following Archie, Betty, Veronica, and Jughead, who was, of course, my favorite, through all their zany misadventures and romantic mishaps. Archie's Weird Mysteries marked my first proper exposure to pulpy B-movie horror as a kid, and as an adult, I found Afterlife with Archie to be among the best horror horror series ever written. Between those points, I kinda fell out of touch with the Riverdale gang, though. Up until a few years ago, Archie had a reputation of being exclusively for kids and the occasional nostalgic adult, and as I grew up, the simple storytelling and archaic sense of humor resonated with me less and less. Eventually, I kinda forgot that Archie was even a thing. And I'm not alone in that. My buddy Scott Nicewander over at NerdSync has made a whole video detailing the history and decline of Archie's fanbase, and also its eventual revival. See, in 2015, as a result of some complicated business dealings that Scott details in his video, not yet Scott, Archie was rebooted to surprising fanfare. With artwork from Saga co-creator Fiona Staples and a story reworked by Eisner Award-winning comic writer Mark Wade, it was well-received and cracked the top 100 best-selling comics of that year. And speaking as a lapsed fan, I couldn't be happier with it. It captures the timeless qualities that young me loved about the original comics, but presents them in a manner that an older, arguably more mature me can appreciate. Alongside Chu and Saga, the new run of Archie is one of the few comics that I consistently keep up with. I love it. So when I heard that the CW was bringing Archie to the small screen in the form of a new TV drama, I was pretty stoked. Archie Comics has been consistently knocking it out of the park with every new rendition of their classic characters. And although their record is spotty between iZombie and The Flash, the CW has shown that they know how to handle comic adaptations adaptations without shying away from the goofier aspects of the source material. On paper, this had all the makings of a great show. I mean, I wasn't following every aspect of the show's production or anything, but I was excited enough to tune into the first episode the day that it aired. And man, was I ever disappointed. I mean, forget Batman vs. Superman and Suicide Squad, I haven't felt this betrayed by an adaptation of source material I love since Mark Webb and Sony butchered The Amazing Spider-Man. Riverdale has two fundamental problems. Firstly, it's a bad TV show. The writing is hot garbage, the direction and editing is mediocre at best, and it has this weird artificial feel to its production design which works well for something campy like The Flash, but not what's supposed to be a more grounded drama. Secondly, it's not Archie. Like, not at all. There's not a single character who's even remotely accurate to their depiction in the comics. And that would be a problem for an adaptation of just about anything, but Archie and the gang aren't just characters, they're icons. Icons that have existed for nearly a century. You may not read Archie comics at all, but if I were to ask you to imagine an Archie story, I'm willing to bet you'd cook something up in your head about Archie clumsily stumbling his way through two simultaneous dates with Betty and Veronica, while Jughead offers support and sardonic mockery and Reggie interferes behind the scenes. These characters are well worn to the point of being archetypes. That doesn't mean they can't change change. I made a whole video about how change is necessary in any good adaptation, but it does mean that it will be extremely noticeable when the show makes even the slightest deviations from the spirit of the original comics. And Riverdale isn't interested in preserving the spirit of Archie at all. To understand the problem more thoroughly, let's look at a few of the characters. 
Archie Andrews is a good kid at heart. He's indecisive, especially in love, but he almost always acts with good intentions. Whether he can make good on those intentions is another story because Archie is preternaturally clumsy and accident prone, but darn it, he tries. And that's what makes us laugh at him and love him. Riverdale's version of Archie Andrews is, well, he's the generic jock protagonist of just about any teen drama that you can think of. He's handsome, muscular, and great at football, but he has a sensitive side that comes out in his music and that draws the ladies to him like moths to a flame. And he struggles to choose between his music and football because apparently Riverdale took some canned plots with it when it borrowed an actor from Disney Channel Originals. And just as an aside on the subject of stuff that bugs me about the show, Archie is supposed to be a budding amateur musician, but the very first time that he plays music for his friends, it's somehow perfectly recorded and mastered on his MacBook. And he has the audacity to say, It's rough. Fuck you it is! Anyway, aside from being a chick magnet, none of this is accurate at all. Archie is good at football, but only sometimes, and the thing that holds him back isn't his music, it's the fact that he's a total klutz. But that defining part of his character is nowhere to be seen in this show. Neither, for that matter, is the part about him being a good kid. As Riverdale starts, Archie has knowledge that could help the police track down a potential murder victim, but he's holding it back because revealing it could potentially uncover his illicit relationship with his teacher, Miss Grundy. Yeah, the 80-year-old Miss Grundy from the comics. Don't get me started on how fucking disgusting that is. Archie wouldn't do that. I mean, he wouldn't do Miss Grundy in the first place because she's a spinster in the comics and the whole idea of making her young and fuckable because the CW has to make everyone young and fuckable regardless of what goddamn sense it makes pisses me off so much, but that's a whole different problem. Archie wouldn't tell a lie that big and potentially life-threatening, especially not for a selfish reason like that. He wouldn't even struggle with it, he'd just immediately tell the police what he knows. Right on the Archie Comics website, outside of being girl crazy, he's described as being selfless, loyal, and eager to lend a hand to everyone. Riverdale's Archie could not be further from that. At his best, he's a thoughtless, self-centered jerk. He's constantly hurting his friends, Betty, Veronica, and Jughead in particular, by ignoring their feelings, breaking promises, and generally being a dick. I think that Reggie Mantle, whose sole purpose in the story is to be an asshole, may actually come across as the nicer guy in the show, and he's painted as a sexist, homophobic pig. On that note, we've got to talk about Kevin Keller. Kevin reached new prominence in the Archie canon when he came out as gay, which is probably the last time that you heard anything about Archie prior to the reboot. And far from being a publicity stunt, they made a real effort to flesh Kevin out into his own character, defined by more than just his sexuality, and to integrate him seamlessly into the Archie gang. And Archie is so quintessentially, classically American that this made a powerful statement that being open and accepting is or should be a classic, wholesome American value. I guess Riverdale's writers couldn't think of a good way to do the same thing though, so they turned Kevin into a cliched accessory for Betty and Veronica. The gay best friend, which is a lot like a regular best friend, only sassier. Sometimes he compliments himself on his own sassiness, because nothing is more endearing than writers writing about how great their own writing is. In the comics, Veronica crushes on Kevin before she realizes he's gay. In the show, she knows instantly, because that's literally all he is. You could catch him on Gaydar from out in fucking space. He's the gay one with the cop dad, because the kids need another point of connection to the central murder mystery, and he had nothing else going on anyway. Actually, let's talk about the parents in this show for a second. More than half of them are either divorced or otherwise split up. Veronica's dad is in jail, and her mom is constantly flirting with Archie's dad, Fred, who is himself divorced. 
Jughead's dad likewise has been left by his wife, although the show implies that it may or may not be permanent. Now, this is weird enough on its own, considering that these parents, particularly Fred Andrews, are primarily characterized in the comics as being salt of the earth types who deeply value family, but things get even more messed up when you look at the parents who are still together. Specifically, Betty Cooper's parents, who are vindictive, manipulative monsters. Betty's mom, who runs the local newspaper, is so twisted that she goes looking in her own daughter's diary for a scoop. She emotionally abuses her daughter basically whenever they share the screen. And Betty gets the light end of it. Her mom has had her sister Polly locked up in a psychiatric institution for embarrassing them by getting pregnant. This is some evil stepmother level bullshit. It defies belief. Miss Cooper is an impossible caricature of a bad parent. She's mostly written that way to give Betty a bunch of hangups, because when you think Betty Cooper, the original girl next door, you think neurotic, possibly schizophrenic mess. Betty is the only character that really conveys what I think they're trying to do with this cast, which is frame their iconic personality traits as masks hiding a deeper inner struggle. But she conveys that only because she's so obvious and unsubtle. Betty doesn't have hangups, she has corpses on meat hooks. She's obsessed with her best friend Archie, and she gets mad at him for not saying he's in love with her the day that he becomes aware that she has any feelings for him at all. When she finds out that the jocks are slut-shaming every girl in the school and lying about who they've slept with as part of a misogynistic leaderboard, her idea of an appropriate response is to kidnap, poison, and almost drown one of them. And while she's doing that, she has a dissociative moment where she thinks that she's Polly. Betty is portrayed as being off her rocker to the same cartoonish degree that her mother is evil, but none of it is played for laughs. I mean, I imagine that it's hilarious if you get drunk and watch it with your friends, but the show seems to think that this is a sensitive and nuanced portrayal of mental illness, and that bugs the shit out of me. Not nearly as much as every word uttered by rich bitches Veronica Lodge and Cheryl Blossom, though. I honestly can't say which of them the show gets worse. Cheryl is pretty insufferable, although on a surface level, she seems the closest to her comic counterpart. In the comics, Cheryl and her brother Jason do have a weird dynamic. I mean, it's not nearly the children of the corn level creepy that we see at the start of Riverdale, but in Afterlife with Archie, it is played up as being straight up incestuous, so Riverdale is at least in keeping with that. Comic Cheryl is also the closest that Archie has to a female Reggie, a scheming, manipulative, mean girl who's always out for number one, but only in regards to Betty and Veronica. She was originally pitched as a genuine love interest for Archie before being sidelined because she was too sexy, and in her own comics, she's portrayed as having a sweet, altruistic side. We might actually be seeing a bit of that in the show as well, since she goes out of her way to help Polly after she finds out that she's pregnant with Jason's daughter. So, weirdly, you could almost say that Cheryl is the most faithful aspect of this adaptation, but she's not exactly the highlight of the show. That's mainly because Madeline Petch doesn't seem to be capable of acting. Her performances consist entirely of speaking while maintaining resting bitch face, which I'm sure isn't easy, but it's not particularly impressive either. And even if she can act, it's not like she can do much with the lines they give her, which have her speaking in hashtags and constantly trying to one-up Veronica with trendy references. Camilla Mendez is definitely a better actress as Veronica, but the script still holds her back from even competence. And since she gets a lot more screen time than Cheryl, she ends up being that much harder to stand. The show paints her as this calculating ice queen, which couldn't be further from the naive but warm-hearted Veronica of the comics, and it gives her some of the worst lines of any character. When Archie is bemoaning having to choose between music and football, she says, Guys, can't we just liberate ourselves from the tired dichotomy of jock artist? Can't we in this post-James Franco world? Someone wrote that line. Post-James Franco world. 
a human being thinks that other human beings talk like that, and a room full of other human beings who are paid to know how human beings talk agreed that it was a good thing to say and included it in the final draft of this script. And the human being who wrote it made potentially as much as you do in a year for that one contribution. Would you believe me when I say that it gets worse? Because, oh boy, does it ever! Hey, you know what happens to a snake when a Louboutin heel steps on it? Shut the hell up or you'll find out. Perhaps the most egregious problem is that she can't, for the life of her, make her pet name for Archie, Archiekins, sound natural. Whenever she says it, it comes across as forced or condescending, when the whole idea is that she's the kind of person who can say something that sappy and dumb without a hint of irony. That's why it's endearing rather than demeaning for Archie. I want to pick out one exchange in particular, like maybe the part where she makes out with Betty to get through cheerleading tryouts, or the part where she's in the closet with Archie for seven minutes in heaven, and she's like, oh no, we shouldn't. Yeah, we really shouldn't. And then they do the thing that they say they shouldn't do. A plus 10 out of 10. Never heard that in a fucking script before. But there are so many awful moments with Veronica that no one stands out in particular. You know what does stand out? You know what makes me want to put my fist through my TV screen? This scene. Of all the characters that they butcher in Riverdale, Jughead gets it the worst. They have taken this playful, intelligent, almost unflappable glutton and turned him into a brooding coffeehouse loner and wannabe writer. Excerpts from the book that he's writing about Jason Blossom's murder are used to bookend each episode, making him the series' de facto narrator, and man, does he give Veronica a run for her money with some of the awful lines that he comes up with. I'm weird. I'm a weirdo. Jughead's not a hard character to write. He has a penchant for pranks, although he'll usually use them for the greater good if that's an option. He pokes fun at everyone around him, but he genuinely cares when his friends are in trouble and often serves as a voice of reason when Archie is going too girl crazy. Jughead, by point of contrast, does not go girl crazy. He barely even registers interest in girls, preferring video games and, most importantly, food. Jughead binge eats burgers like there's no tomorrow. In the older comics, he frequently says that he's in love, like romantic love, with food. And in the new run of Archie, he's canonically asexual. Yet six episodes in, and he's kissed Betty. By episode seven, they're dating, which is weird enough without the context of the comics, because in his novel blurb for the first episode, he writes about how the tension between Betty, Veronica, and Archie is so thick that it's like they're the only people in the world. World. But in relation to the comics especially, it's completely ass backwards. Now, sexuality is a spectrum, and asexuality doesn't necessarily preclude romantic interest, but Jughead isn't romantically interested in anyone. He doesn't care about girls or dating. He's a little boy in a teenage body with adult wisdom. A G-rated hedonist who just wants to indulge in things that make him happy and spend time with his dog. And it is utterly out of character for him to kiss or get romantically involved with Betty, especially before Archie even has a chance to. Hell, Veronica kisses Betty before either of them kiss Archie. That's weird, and not the fun in a little town called Riverdale kind of weird. Now, to be fair, the season isn't over yet. All of this weirdness and out-of-character behavior could be in service of something interesting that turns the whole show around. But the writing is so awful that I just can't hold out hope for that. I don't think that this show is smart enough. But maybe my love for the source material is preventing me from enjoying this new spin. Maybe it plays better to someone without a prior attachment to the series. Like Scott, what do you think of the show? You know, I was never a big Archie fan, so I didn't really know what to expect from the show. I had no interest in seeing it until I heard a bunch of my friends say that they loved it. So I sat down to watch the first episode, I had a, a baffling mix of emotions. I mean, on the one hand, I really hated it. The writing, the acting, etc. It just it didn't feel quite right. But at the same time, I could not look away. And now, here I am, every single week, waiting for new episodes to come out. I mean, it, it's not good, 
for some reason I need it in my life. But it is weird, right? As you said earlier, Archie Comics had a reputation of being exclusively for kids and the occasional nostalgic adult. Most people associate the classic Archie tales as being from a specific and perhaps manufactured slice of time in American history, but the characters also represent a slice of our lives, the teenage years. Being perpetual high school students means that younger kids could read these stories and imagine how fun it would be when they're that age. And adults can look back and reflect on the time when they were that age. As Mark Wade, who wrote the Archie reboot said, quote, they were comics about teenagers that teenagers didn't read, end quote. But Riverdale is a show about the small town teens aimed specifically towards other teens. Maybe that's why it's so different. It's aimed at a completely different and very specific audience who, I guess, you know, seems to love it, as it's already gotten picked up for a second season. Whether we want it or not, the show looks like it's staying around for a little while, and I know that I'm still gonna watch it, even though a little part of me dies inside every single time. Regardless of the actual quality of the show, what the CW has given us is just not Archie. It's basically Twin Peaks filtered through the vapid writing and direction of Beverly Hills 90210 with Archie characters slapped onto the title. Again, I don't think that change is an inherently bad thing with an adaptation. I mean, I just defended the American take on Death Note, but it's vital that you preserve the spirit of the original work, and Riverdale just doesn't do that. I can see someone making the argument that the spirit of the original series is outdated, that you can't make those classic cartoony character archetypes work in a modern setting. Hell, Riverdale even mockingly makes that insinuation with a Pleasantville-esque dream sequence, but you need look no further than the current new Riverdale run of Archie to see that that's not the case. New Archie feels very much like a modern teen melodrama. It's got cell phones and internet rumors and all the trappings that you'd expect of one. It also has superbly modern dialogue that doesn't feel forced. But most importantly, it has the whole cast of Archie characters in all their goofy, authentic glory. Archie is frighteningly clumsy, maybe more so than he's ever been. Jughead is a dreamer and a glutton, and he hasn't even the faintest inkling of an inclination to kiss anyone. Veronica is rich and a bit snooty, but she constantly turns around and shows her classmates that she cares. And any elitism that she might display is just a result of her genuinely not knowing better. And Betty, well, she actually has her share of insecurities in this iteration. She's kind of fighting her safe girl next door image because she's worried it's too bland for Archie and the other guys. But seeing his best friend and the first love of his life changing like that only drives him away. And the push and pull of evolution and resistance to change is one of the driving themes of the whole story. New Archie is dense and smartly written and totally relatable to readers of any age. And it doesn't need a trumped up murder mystery or a secret conspiracy involving Hiram Lodge or faux lesbian makeout sessions to draw in modern audiences. All it needs to do is explore these iconic characters with a bit more depth and it becomes one of the most effortlessly readable comics out there. And I see no good reason why these same principles couldn't apply to a live action show. Archie and Jughead and Betty and Veronica and Reggie are great characters and I wish that the writers had enough confidence to just let them be themselves. They don't even have to abandon the darker elements of their plot. These characters are versatile enough to work anywhere, including a vaguely Lynchian thriller. The whole reason that Afterlife with Archie is so much better than your average zombie comic is that it takes us through the undead apocalypse with a group of heroes who we already know and love. We get to see these characters with decades of history be tested in new ways that fundamentally change them. We also feel that much more of an emotional impact when something happens to them because we already know them so well. The fate of Moose and Midge hits hard without any need to suddenly develop their backstory and raise a death flag, unlike certain 
other zombie stories, this story cuts a lot of the fat because of that backstory. By altering the characters so drastically, Riverdale totally loses that potential benefit. I don't give a shit if Jason Blossom dies, and I feel nothing but cold apathy when Jughead kisses Betty, because these aren't the characters I know. They're CW teenager templates wearing Archie and the gang's skin. This is the same problem that I have with Batman vs. Superman. I don't give a shit when Batman and Superman start punching each other because they're not really Batman and Superman. They don't have the history to make that fight impactful. And man, I just wish that I could see the characters I love on screen instead of these crappy imitations. Even if it was the same garbage story minus Archie banging Miss Grundy because... Ew. Staying true to that foundation would make it a million times better. Archie has a lot of history, about 75 years worth, and it's more than Jeff could possibly cover here, so head on over to NerdSync and let me tell you all about it. Jeff will be there too, because this is a YouTube collab thing, and that's, that's typically how these work. You'll definitely want to check that out. Scott's Comic Misconception series is one of my favorite things on YouTube, and it's taught me a ton about the superheroes that I don't have the time to read up on myself. And likewise, Jeff's videos have taught me a lot about anime that I would otherwise have no inclination to watch. So if you enjoyed his brand of analysis here, go check out his other videos. I love the ones about Sword Art Online, because it makes everyone angry. But also subscribe to Mother's Basement for more of them. Thanks, Scott, and thanks to everybody who's watching. I'm Jeff Thu, Professional Shitbag, and I'll see you all over at NerdSync.